The Louisiana Creole Alphabet. Consonants and vowels. A. A. Abricot. Abricot. A. A. Lad. Lad. B. B. Banon. Banon. C. C. Francais. Francais. Chi. Chi. Choris. 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 D. D. Dipom. Dipom. J. J. Job. Job. E. E. Besoin. Besoin. F. F. Fivi. Fivi. G. G. Gri. Gri. Hush. Hush. Hilly. Hilly. E. E. Igloo. Igloo. J. J. Japon. Japon. K. K. Kapab. Kapab. L. L. Lai. Lai. M. M. Mai. 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 N. N. Nilifon. Nilifon. Nye. Nye. Lonyap. Lonyap. Lanyap. Lanyap. Lonyap. Lonyap. Lanyap. Lanyap. O. O. Uktob. 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 E. E. Kur. Kur. U. U. Ibu. Ibu. Kuku. 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 P. P. Papier. Papier. R. 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 Rose. Rose. S. S. La salade. La salade. She. She. Shawi. 
Shall we? T. T. Tattoo. Tattoo. U. U. Unis. Unis. V. V. Vase. Vase. W. W. Way. Way. Y. 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 Yisil. 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 Z. Z. Zeb. Zab. Zeb. Zab. Accentuation. Right, so we'll begin with the acute accent known in Louisiana Creole as aigu. And the aigu has two functions in the language. Uh, one, it's uh, for emphasis on a syllable. And two, it opens the sound of one of the vowels, uh, which is the e. So we'll begin with the emphatic syllable. Um, the a by itself is a, and it's also a with the acute on the top. Um, however, we see the difference when we pronounce it in a word. So we have an example here for Rosa. Rosa in Creole would be Rosa. Rosa. So we hear that the final syllable, uh, za, has the emphasis. So we place the acute accent over the a. Rosa. We'll skip over to I. I by itself is E. And it's also E with a cute, same as the A. And when we hear it in a word, we hear the uh, the emphasis on that syllable. So the example here is one of the ways to say corn, which is mayi. Mayi, where we stress the final syllable. Mayi. Next we have O. O is the same with the acute accent over it. Uh, we have an example here, tayo, tayo. Tayo means a mixed breed dog, a mutt. And we also use the aigu over the u, the u. Uh, I couldn't think of any examples, but nor did I have enough space. But uh, we do use it over the u uh, for that exact same purpose, emphasis. So in this capacity, the aigu, the acute, is used in the same way that it's used in Spanish for stress over a syllable. And lastly, we have the e. What happens with the e when we place the acute over it is it changes the sound. It doesn't change the sound of... Uh, the vowels used in um, the other examples, the A, the I, O, and U, those remain the same. Uh, however, the E changes. It opens the sound of the E from an U uh to an A, long A in English. And the best, most popular example I could come up with was the name for Houston's own Beyonce. Uh, because she places the acute accent over the E, it opens it up to A, and so her name is Beyoncé. Uh, if it were not there, then it would be Beyoncé. Beyoncé. So, Beyoncé. It opens the sound. We'll move over to the grave accent, known as the grave, in Creole, grave. The grave have, has one, um, fo uh, one purpose. And that purpose is to soften the vowel sound. It softens the vowel sound over three vowels, of three vowels. The E, the uh, the E, the I, and the O. The E, the I, and the O. So the E, we know, is E, and the grave makes it E, a short E in English. E. In our example here, we have less. It's the present tense conjugation for the verb lisi, which means to leave, lisi. Moles, I leave. 
When the grave is over the I, the I by itself is E, and with the grave, it's E. So a short I sound, E. Uh, and we get words like babin, babin, babin. Babin is one of the ways we say pout. It can also mean mouth, and it can also mean lips. Babin. And finally, we have the grave that falls over the O. And when it falls over the O, it changes the sound of the O to A. A. And so we find it in words, many words, words such as zot. Zot. Zot is a personal pronoun that can mean we, we all, you, plural, or you, you all, or y'all. Zot. Next, we have the trima. Trima. The trima's purpose is really to separate two vowels, two vowels that are next to each other in a word that we want to uh, separate the two sounds of them. Um, in some languages, we have a tendency to um, create a diphthong out of two vowels that are next to one another. So the trima stops us from doing that. It's a visual, um, visual cue that, okay, these two vowels must be pronounced independent of one another. And there are many examples, I just use three here. So AI, the A by itself is A, as we know, and the I is E. So with the trema, it becomes AI, AI, AI. Um, the example that I used is one of the, the, the second way to pronounce the word for corn. Uh, previously, we looked at MAYI with a Y, MAYI. And in this particular case, it's ma'i, ma'i. Sounds very similar. One has a Y sound in it, the other one does not. Ma'i. A O A O. A O. I use the word for chaos. Uh, it's one of the ways to express chaos. Kao, kao, kao. Chaos. Kao. And the last example I have here is au, au, au. Au, as we see on the right-hand side in the right column, is an alternate way of saying and writing the word for where in Louisiana Creole. Uh, similar to the, the case with ai and mai, um, there's a tendency in the language for a, a, a an intrusive Y to appear between the A and the U. And so the alternate way of saying uh, the word for where in Louisiana Creole is AYU. AYU. But this particular example is with AU. AU. Next we have the circumflex. The circumflex. The circumflex, as it's known in English, uh, in Louisiana Creole functions to uh, distinguish homonyms. We have many, many words in Louisiana Creole that all sound the same. They all sound the same, but they have different meanings. They have different meanings. I just use four examples, but we see it in, we're in personal pronouns uh, versus uh, possessive pronouns. Um, they're widespread. Here are four examples. They all sound like C. C. They all sound like C. The top one, C, C, D, E, E, aigu. C, C, D, E, E, aigu. C means it is or it's. C'est bon. C'est mauvais. C'est bien. It's good. It's bad. It's well. C. The second example, C, means these. C, C, D, E, E, circonflex. Means these. Uh, most commonly used in along by Utash, really, uh, the way that they express these C. The third example, C S E aigu means would or should, would or should. C mosse coupé, I would cut or I should cut mosse coupé. And the fourth example, C S E circumflex means his or her. Uh, his or her C is used uh, in the same location as C uh, for these uh, by Utesh country. So all four of those 
make the same sound, but they mean different things. So therefore, we use the circumflex to help visually the reader know uh, which one we're using uh, the context for. And then we have a situation where we have near diphthongs, which are similar to the trima, except that they're not quite separated. They're almost one sound that's created from two letters. Almost one sound, but not quite. And really, another way to look at it is um, that the the vowel that's preceded, uh, followed by a consonant, is being elongated. So the first uh, one that we have here is a y, a y. The a we know is a. The y is y. It's a y sound, right? Um, but when it falls after a vowel, it sort of makes an E sound, the sound of an I. Uh, so the example that we have here is pi, pi, pi. Pi means straw, like a straw that you drink with or any kind of straw. Pi, and so it elongates the A really. Pi, pi. We almost make a Y sound at the end. It's sort of half pronounced. Pi. Uh, number two here we have a, e y e acute y a, a. Our example is fe, fe, fe is one of the ways we say leaf. You can also say fe, fe is the example. The third one sounds very similar to the second. Uh, it's the short. E sound because it has a grave over the E. A, A, and we hear it in words like pay, pay. Pay is the present tense conjugation for the verb payi, which means to pay. So mu pay means I pay. I, Y, E, Y means uh, makes the, uh, a longer I sound. E, E, and so we see it in words like fami, fami, which is sometimes pronounced fami, fami. And the last example is o y, oi. Um, and we find it in words a lot of times that comes from English, like um, boy in English, boy. We have a word for boy in in, in Creole, which is garçon. Um, but sometimes it becomes a nickname for people. Uh, very often happens. So, uh, boy, we pronounce the exact same way. Boy, boy. So we elongate the O. Boy, boy. And there's a sort of half Y pronunciation at the very end. So those are our near diphthongs. Not quite one sound yet. Now we'll move on to nasals. Uh, Louisiana Creole has two nasal classes. One is the short nasal class, and the second is the long nasal class. And the long nasal class really is just an elongated form of the short nasal. Sometimes we have a word that has a short nasal, and the exact same word we elongate. And so we get it in both the short nasal and the long nasal. Okay, let's begin with the en on the left-hand side, short nasals, en. There are four different spellings for en, a-n, a-m, e-n, e-m. They all make the same sound, en, more or less. So with a-n, we get it in words like Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. Anthony is one of the ways to say Anthony. Antoine is the other way, which could have also been used as an example. Antoine, Anthony. Next example, Onyi, Onyi. You're sitting in class and your teacher is not interesting, nor the lecture. So you're bored. 
And the way that we say bored is ennuyé. Ennuyé. <laughs> I.M. temps is our example. Temps, weather, en. Ça, ça fait beau temps. It's a nice weather out. So, the N nor the M are pronounced in the short nasals. They all make the en sound. Anthony, ennuyé, temps. Next we have un. Un can be expressed as I in or I am. We get it in words like pain ye, a verb that means to comb. Pain ye. Pain ye. And we also get it in names like joissin. Joissin is a male given name, joissin. So both of those make un sound. The N and the M are not pronounced. They're nasalized. Eh. Our third group is un. Un. Un can be spelled O-N or O-M. So for the O-N, we have mouton. Mouton. Mouton is a sheep. It's also a surname in southwest Louisiana. Mouton. And it also means mutton in English. O M on bombe la bombe a bomb bombe and finally we have the un u n un and our example is quelqu'un 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 is someone quelqu'un it literally means someone quelqu'un Okay, we'll move over to the long nasals. You're in luck because I couldn't find examples for all of them. Uh, just know that when you see them, you'll know uh, that they'll be pronounced uh, as we discuss in this particular chart. So the A-N by itself we uh, mentioned was A. Uh, and when we have two N's, the N is fully pronounced this time. So it becomes on, on, on. And we have it in words like la louisiane. One of the ways to say Louisiana in Creole. La Louisiane. Uh, the A-M-M, -M, uh, because the in, there are two M's there, the M is going to be pronounced, so it's om, om. And the E-M-M, -M, same situation. It's going to be om. Om. Sounds the exact same. Next, we have a, an entire group that comes from, really, the I-N, the A. Um, we have many sort of possibilities in the elongated form. Uh, so, firstly, there's the, the form for, elongated form for A, which is AN. And we spell AN with E acute, I'm sorry, E grave, in N. A grave, in N. AN. And a perfect example of that exact same spelling is the word that we use for the country, India. An. And we've spelled the elongated form of a to an, uh, e grave in n, because if we spell it i in n, then we run into a situation where the sounds are different. i in n is actually in. Uh, we find it in many words, words like la Chine, China, la Chine. I in in with a grave over the I is e, so in, in. And we see it mostly in given names for females, like Josephine, Caroline. In. Next we have im. So im is like the im version of in, the in. Im, Maxime, Maxime. Used to be a male, popular male given name, Maxime. And we also have am. 
So there's N, U grav N N, and there's also M, U grav M M. Okay, next group, the un, the elongated un, which becomes un or um, un, um. Uh, the best example of the un I could come up with was, um, this happens quite frequently in Louisiana Creole with words that come, names, uh, given names that come from the English language that we incorporate and use it in the Louisiana Creole language, but we elongate the sound of it. The, the very end of it. And Carlton is one example. For us, Carlton becomes Carlton. 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 And finally, we have the elongated form of un, which is un, un. The exact same sound as undo, the U-N in English. Undo, un. And the word, the example that we use for un, Kick uh, some one kick uh, we can also use for the elongated form kikan kikan means the exact same thing someone kikan kikan right uh, so that's the end hopefully this has helped you a little bit with the Louisiana Creole alphabet you basically have everything you need to um, tackle reading and writing modern Louisiana Creole orthography. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, send them on in. Uh, we'd uh, be happy to hear from you. Thanks for watching and for listening. Take care. Now, wa puta, swing, woo, au revoir.